He wonders whether the requests we found today also were planted at the recycling facility. Yeah, I think you got set up too. You know, I think somebody stole these documents and somebody planted them at the recycling plant so you would find them. J.C. Joyce has asked District Attorney David Moss to investigate the documents that ABC's Primetime Live obtained for its report to see if they were stolen. And now, more prayer requests are found in the trash. David Moss has yet to decide, however, if he's going to investigate any of this. Brad, there, were, there was a huge box, three or four boxes of those there. They had staples in them. They were set aside by the recycling plant. And they were mixed in there with all sorts of envelopes. Now, how could those have just been randomly put there by someone... Well, what, what basically what the attorney for IDM has told me is that uh, these prayer requests appear to have just been in there mistakenly. They, they were not marked off in any way. Uh, it was just a mistake, is, is what they're saying. That, that's different than saying we were set up. Yeah, exactly. Now, that, that is different. Yeah. The, the IDM is not saying that at all. Postal inspectors have started an investigation into the Dallas Televangelist Ministry. Jim Travel, a spokesman for the U.S. Postal Service down in Fort Worth, says the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Tulsa has asked postal inspectors for help. The U.S. Attorney in Tulsa, Tony Graham, says he can't confirm or deny the investigation. This development comes at the same time Robert Tilton's lawyer, J.C. Joyce of Tulsa, says he's through answering questions from the media. Tulsa lawyer J.C. Joyce appeared on Robert Tilton's program last Sunday to discredit attacks on Tilton's church aired by ABC's Primetime Live. The main source for ABC's information is Ole Anthony, who runs the Dallas Trinity Foundation, which monitors televangelists. That man through the years has talked to every fired employee of this church. He's talked to uh, employees of the church, and he has never been able to find where this church has done anything wrong. So he tried to frame this church. When we found more letters intended for Tilton at this North Tulsa paper recycling center, Joyce said it was another part of the conspiracy to destroy Tilton's church. Anthony calls that allegation ridiculous. He says he doesn't care about Robert Tilton or J.C. Joyce. Anthony says he wishes Tilton would sell everything he has and give it back to the poor. No questions. I will not dignify this anymore. You have heard the story. You're talking about Thank only, you. You're talking about only you don't hear very well. As far as J.C. Joyce is concerned, he's had it with the media attention and refuses to answer any more questions about the Tilton ministry. With an allegation. Gentlemen, ladies, you're excused. But if the pastor is weak, the sheep will be weak. If the pastor is healthy, the sheep will be healthy. Might as well go the rest of the way. Is prosperous, the sheep will be prosperous. Do you believe that? Really? I said if the pastor's prosperous, the sheep will be prosperous. If the pastor's successful, the sheep will be successful. I've, I've seen an old adage come to pass in the last few days. One's man, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. <laughs> that sounds like headlines to me. I'm trying to help you folks out there. I know you need all the help you can get. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spectrum. Is God for sale? Can you buy salvation from a TV preacher? A broader question, is it anybody's business except those who believe how a TV evangelist uses the money his followers send him? Well, the top money man on TV today is Dallas minister Bob Tilton. Some people say what he does with the millions of dollars he hauls in does deserve investigation because of the way he peddles the pulpit of prosperity. Exactly a year ago on this very program, we discussed Brother Bob's ways. Since then, ABC's Prime Time has conducted its own investigation of Tilton, which has fired up prosecutors here in Texas to begin their own investigation. Tilton says this is all a violation of his constitutional rights of freedom of religion. Is it? We want to know if people gave money to what they believed was a charity, such as an orphanage in Haiti, that those children in 
Haiti saw the money that those people gave and that the money was not instead spent on some fancy house or a boat or first class travel for Brother Bob or whatever. Pastor Tilton does live well. He rents a mansion in Las Colinas while his new mansion is being built a few blocks away. He has a million dollar mansion out in San Diego and has a waterfront house down in South Florida, a big yacht out front, and he rides around in nothing less than Mercedes style. Tilton doesn't apologize for his lifestyle. In fact, he says he preaches prosperity and should practice what he preaches. We invited Pastor Tilton and his attorney, J.C. Joyce, to be with us for this discussion. This empty chair represents their response to that invitation. Now, Ole, they say that you lied to get in there, you know, that you went with ABC and said you were a minister trying to start a big money uh, no, ministry like, like uh, Bob Tilton's no, to get into response. That's meeting. not right. Okay. We, I went in as myself. We were in negotiation at the time with, with Fox Television mm -hmm. to, to produce a talk show. And we went in to Response Media to ask them, what, what's, a, what's a way, how would you handle the anticipated large amounts of mail that would come in? That's what the basis upon going in there. Did you ever discuss with them, though, in specific, what Tilton does? They voluntarily used Tilton as the reason that we should sign, them, sign with them. They were using Tilton as their greatest success. They showed, we, we had two hours of, of, on that hidden camera. There was two hours of, of him selling us on how much he has done for Tilton. In fact, his quote was to us that Brother Bob was losing it. He was, he was going out of business until 1986 when he signed with us. We made him. We can do the same for you. Now, when, when you were there, you were going over their ability in computerized lists to go through demographics, match up exactly. people so they can get the most money from, from uh, the what group of people. Did they say specifically that Tilton uses that demographic service to match names with big money contributors? They are in, in a business relationship with another Tulsa company called Internal Data Management. And they we have memos that show their seminars where they use... The, the, the demographics to see how the best way to conduct these mailings. They use what they call in the marketing terms an A-B split. You remember the last time I was here we brought all those obscene posters he sends out? Right. Well they decided that the posters were too expensive so they're, there's, in their marketing scheme they had what's called an A-B split to determine whether or not they would get just as much money if they didn't spend the money to print the poster. So they sent half of, the, half of the letters with the poster, half of them with just a letter. Ola, you and ABC say your investigation showed the vials of holy water that Tilton uh, offered as being from the River Jordan were actually acquired by Response Media from Taiwan. That's let me not right. Well, okay, we did what, not what, say that. You think he got the water from Jordan? Of course he gets it, but it's a joke. It's a sh Even if everything he said was right, it's spiritual sorcery. They're going to... You're, but did he mislead people if it's from the River Jordan, whether it's processed water or not? But the point is, we have evidence, we have people that testified on, 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 the, on, a, on, a, on a television station in Tulsa mm -hmm. that say they had all these part-time employees. And that, the, the problem with all these organizations, their weakness are their, is their trash, their janitors, and their part-time employees mm -hmm. that say that whenever they run out of water, they just go back to the tap. <laughs> They run out of holy oil to go down to the, to the supermarket and buy a, a bottle of, of, of uh, safflower oil. I mean, do you, do you understand? It's a sham. It's a joke. And you believe that, that that constitutes fraud that should be investigated? I believe that his whole persona, especially the idea of... I mean, do you understand this? He says, he claims that he takes every one of these prayer requests lays over them to the extent that the ink from the prayer request sort of chelates into his body and his lower eyes get messed up so he has to have plastic surgery. And he, and he probably, he, he lays on him so strong that his, that his hair gets so messed up that he has to have permanence every week. And he lays on this so bad that it that it that he has to have make more makeup on than, than who Tammy Faye that. Baker. And there are people <laughs> who believe that. I mean, he makes Tammy Faye look like she's sweet. Why is it wrong for somebody to believe that, though? If it's they believe it, if if they find Christ that way, what's wrong with that? If that's how they find look, Christ. Look, look, Mike. Let's be. Let's be. Let's look at this. Are you greedy? Oh, uh, some say I am. Yeah. Well, of course you are. <laughs> the human race is greedy. And if you can find a spiritual leader that justifies your greed, you will elevate them to the highest 
point, the highest pinnacle. And that's where you and say Robert Tilton is. And that's what Robert Tilton is. He's a spiritual leader, allegedly, that elevates greed. The Dallas minister who helped ABC News investigate TV evangelist Robert Tilton today showed reporters thousands of pages of documents collected during the six-month investigation. Trinity Foundation President Ole Anthony says most of the prayer requests addressed to Tilton not only failed to reach him, but are never intended to reach him. At the bank, the money is taken out. If it doesn't have a legible name and address, it goes to the trash there. Here are some of the prayer requests that Anthony said he found in the bank's trash. One says, to be opened by Robert Tilton only, please. Jimmy was supposed to have a personal prayer appointment in October with Tilton. And where did you find that? In the trash at the bank. Both Tilton's bank and his direct mail company, Internal Data Management, deny they've ever knowingly thrown prayer requests in the trash. In fact, an internal 1988 IDM memo found by Anthony orders IDM employees not to throw prayer requests into the shred box. But the same memo seems to confirm that Tilton never even sees the prayer requests of his followers. It says the key is to document each piece and to treat it as though it were to be read and handled by Pastor Tilton himself. What would he have done with this document to serve the people the best way he could? Anthony says computers answer Tilton's mail. If you have a sister that is ready to commit suicide, they put the code in this computer that says say for instance AB64 well AB64 then will automatically generate a personalized letter from Robert and Marty Tilton that that says we have personally prayed over this problem of yours and here is our answer Dallas TV preacher Robert Tilton is tonight being accused of spiritual sorcery a televangelist watchdog today outlined what he claims is Tilton's wheel of fortune as Texas News 5 chief correspondent Mike Snyder explains. Names and addresses, names and addresses, names and addresses. Names are what feed the Wheel of Fortune. A Wheel of Fortune, Ole Anthony so the, claims, the feeds $100 million a year into Tilton's Dallas-based TV ministry. Money Anthony and his Dallas-based Trinity Foundation claim is fraudulently pried out of believers who send prayer requests to Brother Bob. What she asked for is a real dad. But there was no name and address on it. There was only a first name, so it ended up in the trash. Anthony claims he found these unanswered prayer requests in a dumpster behind a Tulsa, Oklahoma bank that deposits all of Tilton's money. Tilton's attorney claims the prayer requests were stolen and planted to frame the ministry. Because it has nothing to do with mail fraud being practiced by this church. It has to do with freedom of religion. That's spiritual sorcery. Anthony says he doesn't want to see Pastor Tilton put behind bars. What he'd rather see is Congress pass a new law regulating TV preachers, something like the truth in advertising laws that would require preachers like Tilton to prove their claims before they broadcast on your TV. Far from a TV preacher himself, Dallas minister Ole Anthony has emerged as televangelism's number one critic. At a news conference, he showed off maps, charts, and thousands of documents he says he found in Tulsa trash. To Anthony, it reveals a big and phony business, cashing in on the lonely and the elderly. It's got to break your heart to think about what this is doing to the people. You foul, rotten, stinking devil, I'm going to beat you up, you devil, I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of... But according to Anthony, it isn't Tilton who really runs things, it's his Tulsa attorney, J.C. Joyce. The maestro. Joyce has a few comments of his own in for critics like Anthony. That it is some supposed Christian lunatic fringe that is slime that periodically crawls out from under a rock. As if there weren't enough strange twists in all this, a man posing as a reporter, complete with his own camera crew, heckled Anthony at his news conference. You know, if ABC prints it, I guess that makes it just right, doesn't it? Anthony believes somebody connected to Tilton put him up to it, the man claims he came on his own. A Dallas-based church continues its assault on TV preacher Robert Tilton tonight. Today it was stacks of documents, more fraud allegations, and a shouting match with a shadowy figure. Almost all of the really damaging material we found on the business of evangelism came from the office of J.C. Joyce. In fact, J.C. Joyce has, I think, a camera crew here today, and I'd like to give him a hand. 
Minutes later, a man who at first identified himself as a reporter began shouting at Anthony. What? How much is Mr. Joyce paying you? Mr. Joyce is paying me, and I suppose you are working with who, sir? I'm working, my name is Pat Poole, I'm out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, I'm here with Shore Entertainment, and because we got questions, Poole was accompanied by a camera crew. He later described himself as unemployed, then self-employed, and finally as a man who makes movies. He also clashed briefly with a reporter from Tulsa who thought he should confine himself to questions. Dude, this is kind of fun. Let, I'm going to hold a press conference later today. You already are. And, well, no. <laughs> Prime Time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Three weeks ago, we told you about the $80 million ministry of Robert Tilton in Dallas. How he promises to in pray the over the personal responses of followers. Most of which, in fact, just go to one of the banks he uses in Tulsa in his data processing plant so he can get the money. And the prayer requests go into the trash. Stop. Tilton and his lawyer immediately went on television denying this Rights. and denouncing Gives us. us. ABC is attempting to burn this Christian church to the ground with their lies and yellow journalism. But last week, our story was confirmed when a television station in Tulsa photographed thousands of Tilton prayer mailings at a Tulsa recycling plant in the trash. Tilton said he must have already prayed over them, but primetime obtained receipts showing the requests weren't sent there by Pastor Bob or his church, but went straight from the Professional Data Processing Center to the dump. And it's been going on for years. The former owner of the plant says he saw it. And not only that, the center was anxious to keep it a secret. This was confidential, uh, as far as they were concerned. But it's no secret now, and federal investigators from the FBI and post office have seized the trash and joined three other government agencies looking into Tilton's ministry. You don't have to put anything in the offering if you don't want to. You weren't charged to park on the parking lot. You weren't charged to listen to the music. But come next week, I got to pay the band. <laughs> Marzo, they're praying, Lord, shut Bob up. Well, I was going to ride my donkey in today. <laughs> but the donkey trainer said that I was a little heavy for him. So you'll have to come tonight to see the donkey. You want know to name my donkey? Holy. That's right, I said it on television. <laughs> Ollie! <laughs> no, you don't say it. No. It's really, te you know what I want to say, don't you? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I know the reporters are watching and listening and writing this and, oh, please say it, it makes such great copy. If you say it, you're a liar, because I didn't say it. Robert Tilton's television ministry is under fire once again. Accusers say he claims to read prayer requests he never sees, requests that instead get thrown in the trash. Channel 6 reporter Terry Hadley went to Osage County today and visited with a woman who says she's sick of reading Tilton's mail. But for some reason, I'm called to look at this camera and look right at you. Right into this home in Winona, Oklahoma. Earlier this year, Beverly Crowley's husband, Tom, was dying. Dad, he was diabetic. His kidneys had failed on kidney dialysis. He'd almost went blind. His circulation, he'd lost part of one hand and was going to have to lose his leg and several other parts. Beverly Crowley says her husband was confined to his bed. He watched televangelists constantly, often sending money to their ministries. He died in September at age 38. Now, more than 10 weeks later, Robert Tilton's computerized mail system still addresses letters to Tom. Crowley says Tilton's letters to her dead husband offend her, especially the part where Tilton writes to Tom, I sensed God wanting me to ask you a very special question. Tilton has to be lying to say that because God wouldn't have told him such a thing. And it's in his own letter that he sent to Tom, which Tom's no longer here. And you receive letters like this after your husband's dead, still 
looking for the miracle and telling you God told him it's on his way, and it'll hurt you pretty bad, you know. But Robert Tilton doesn't know about Beverly Crowley's pain. He just insists he's an honest prophet. Well, it seems if they could really talk to God and God to them, they'd know it is time to stop sending them to Tom, I would think. So far, that hasn't happened. In Winona, Terry Hadley, Channel 6 News. I think it's better not to listen to anything the secular press has to say, because you don't know if they're telling you the truth or not, or twisting, or half-truths, or fabricating, or making it up. It's the truth. And I go a little step further. If you work for a newspaper, you ought to believe God for a better job. It's been another rough year for televangelists. Scandals in TV ratings are weighing heavily, as CNN's Brian Cabell reports. For Jimmy Swaggart, it was deja vu. In October, he was discovered with a prostitute in his car. This after his 1988 involvement with another prostitute. His once thriving ministry has been decimated. One time televangelist superstar Jim Baker made one public appearance in 91 in shackles to get his prison sentence for fraud reduced. Robert Tilton was accused of fraud, though a Dallas based minister who reportedly receives $80 million a year from his followers vigorously denied it. I am here before God and I'm not going to hell for no man. I am here before God. My wife and I are as honest as the day is long. But investigators from several agencies are now checking into that. Televangelism had another rough year. Not surprising perhaps when you combine religion with TV. The stories became history. Air raid sirens are beginning. They expect you to believe all that garbage. The pictures became memories. Or is he a tactician? It's just not worth it. I'm a Christian. Images of 91. Showtime! Oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. We believe in prayer. We believe in miracles. Why did Jesus Mother people. Send us washing my face this morning. All the kids are gone. There's a prayer that I will be praying for the next year. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. close to thee. I've got some dreams and visions. Glory by Shanda, la bosoto basata. Oh, da basata, da da ba da ba da soto. Hallelujah. That's singing in tongues for you illiterate folks out there. And you media people that are taping this, please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again, or your blood is going to be on your own hands. God is my witness on a thousand Bibles. I pray over your prayer request. I spent hours in prayer breaking the powers of darkness. I have the boldness to get in front of this television set to preach you the truth and the gospel without being afraid of man, but only fearing that I don't believe the gospel that God commanded me to preach. Reaching the world. I mean, we got a vision to reach the world. I just don't do it like everybody else does it. And it is flat got the religious world and the devil and the heathen and the unbelieving mad. But they said, we couldn't find the orphanage in Haiti. How weak. And you know what? They expect you to believe all that garbage. They actually think you're stupid enough to believe their lies. You understand this? Then they get on the media. Yes, it's, it is official. Tilton is under investigation by the state of Texas Attorney General's office. So what? Anybody can be under investigation. <laughs> I'm not look stupid, but I ain't stupid. It says a fool doesn't want to know the truth. All he wants to do is scream. You'd be amazed how many letters come without money in them, and I still pray and believe and agree and, and, and minister to you. So, until we meet again, happy trails. I love that song. Happy trails to you until we meet again. And Jesus is still Lord. God bless you. Marty, come here and join me now. Come here and join me. Just come here. Thanks, honey. You're so sweet and obedient. I tell you, I have God. Great, great.